Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about all the latest trade news. So without further ado, let's get straight into the video. So the first one we obviously have is the biggest free agent in Tom Lynch officially joins Richmond today after Gold Coast decides not to match Richmond's offer. We all knew this was coming. There was no way that Gold Coast were going to match the offer. I mean, like, if they didn't match the offer, they were going to be given pick number three. So they didn't match the offer, and now they've got pick three, which means they will have pick two and three and maybe pick number five if the Stephen May trade deal goes through, which I actually think it probably will. So Tom Lynch actually came down today at Punt Road, got a couple of pictures done and all that type of stuff, did a couple of press conferences, made a couple of mistakes, for example, even said like something about playing in black and gold and then quickly um, rephrased it as yellow and black, which I thought was pretty funny. But anyway, it's really great to see Tom Lynch finally in the Richmond colours after it basically being called the worst seeker in AFL, considering it's basically been confirmed for the past four months. Even though Tom Lynch and his management team and Richmond decided to stay real quiet on it, it's basically been confirmed. Everybody knew um, knew about it. Like Even the Collingwood and Hawthorne supporters who were hoping and were saying that we're going to get Tom Lynch even stopped talking about it. Like It was basically a done deal. So, yep, that's officially done today. So, the next one we also have is another Richmond and Gold Coast thing, and that is Anthony Miles and Corey Ellis have officially been traded to Gold Coast. Wow, they, this is absolutely great news for Gold Coast. They can barely get any plays in. They don't get too many in. And Anthony Miles is such a great player in the VFL, way above VFL level. He'd get a game at most clubs, and he obviously won the JJ Liston Trophy, which is basically VFL's version of the Brownlow. So that's really great for him. That pro You would think that would have increased his trade stocks up quite a bit, and Richmond were going to get a pretty good trade out of him and young Corey Ellis, who is legit about to turn 22. So you'd think maybe they get some trade stock out of him. Corey Ellis was also um, picked 12 from like four years ago. But no, the trade was very one-sided, and... It definitely confuses me about why this trade was done. A lot of people just saying it was to free cap space. But the trade that happened was Anthony Miles, Corey Ellis, and Richmond's future third for Gold Coast's future third. So that's basically Gold Coast at least maybe pick 39 for Anthony Miles, Corey Ellis, and maybe Richmond's like, I don't know, pick 57. I really don't know what that would be. Obviously, we can't tell because next season hasn't happened yet. But a lot of people are saying it's due to cap space. But then there's some people saying that there might have been some com like complications with the Lynch deal and that Gold Coast were actually taking a lot longer with it and were going to mess around and all that type of stuff. And they said, basically, if you don't do this trade, then we will mess around and make things more complicated. So it'd be much harder for the deal to be done, which I don't, I don't know if that rumor and theory would be true. I mean, it could be true. Gold Coast could have been like, yeah, just get this deal done or we're going to make you guys live hell for getting Tom Lynch. But I doubt it. I don't think that would have really happened. At the end of the day, no matter what happens, Tom Lynch is going to Richmond and Gold Coast can't do anything about it. So not too sure, but I think the real thing is just to get rid of some cap. Like I feel like Corey Ellis is on maybe 300000 plus a year. Anthony Miles on 450000 plus a year probably as well. So probably just a cap squeeze. But anyway, massive win for Gold Coast. These two players will come in like very handy for their 2019 season. It will definitely help a lot of the younger players out. And um, Anthony Miles is going to try his absolute hardest. Like He's been doing it his whole career. And he's always been basically Richmond's 23rd man alongside Sam Lloyd. So... Very sad for him, but it's very great now. He's finally got given the opportunity to now at Gold Coast. Same with Corey Ellis, just couldn't get into the team. Anyway, the next trade we have is Lincoln McCarthy to the Brisbane Lions. Don't really care too much for this one. I don't think a lot of people have really taken too much notice to it. I mean, Lincoln McCarthy hasn't done overly much in his career. He's been injured and just hasn't been getting back into the team due to maybe some inconsistency as well. So... Not really too much. He was sort of just like out of Geelong's team and not really ever going to get back in it. And Lockie Neal obviously has requested a trade to Brisbane and he has showed his interest in... He 100% wants to be playing for Brisbane in 2019, basically. And Lincoln McCarthy and that um and Lockie Neal were actually like friends or something like that. So definitely good to get both of them at the club at the right time. Build some more um friendships and yeah, it would just make your club a nice positive and happy place, and they really didn't have to get um, give too much up for him. 
Like Geelong only actually had to give up pick um, 54 and 57. And in return, they get 42 and 60. And it looks like that pick 42 will be used um, for Gary Rowan now. A lot of people are saying that that might that deal might, like, maybe he's worth a bit more than pick 42. I don't really know. I think Rowan could be, I, I don't know, he passed his at least time, passed his prime, like, definitely. And 42, I think, seems just about right. But if maybe they want something else and they won't do the deal, just put in um, pick 60 as well. So I don't really know. I think Sydney would definitely do that. Anyway, the next one we have is actually not a trade, and that is Will Setterfield from GWS has officially requested a trade to the Colton Football Club, which this is great for both clubs. Obviously, GWS has a massive cap problem at the moment. Some saying they're a million to two million dollars over the cap. They've gotten rid of um, Rory Lobb, basically. Well, it hasn't been confirmed, but it'll probably happen in the next couple of days or at the last day of um, the trade. So, basically, it looks like Rory Lobb is going to Fremantle. And Will Setefield now wants to go to Carlton, and Dylan Shield could probably be on his way to Carlton as well. So, I'm not too sure what Will Setefield is worth. I mean, he was a pick five from, like, two years ago. He's been really injured his whole career, basically. I think he did his knee, and... This is a great trade for Carlton, too, because obviously Carlton want Dylan Shield. They want him bad, and I think that if they get both of these plays, it could maybe be a future first round and a future second round or something like that for Seto Field and Shield. I think that would be at least appropriate, and I've said it before in a video. I think why not talk about Matthew Cruiser to GWS? GWS need a Ruckman. Why not Matthew Cruiser? I know he's injured. He's like 31 or 30 or something like that, but... I don't know, why Why wouldn't you do it? Dylan Shield, obviously, he wants to go to a Victorian club, is basically what it looks like. Carlton have a lot of picks, very high up picks. A future first round is what they're offering. Setterfield wants to go to Carlton. They need a Ruckman. What more points do I need? I just seriously think that Carlton should consider putting Matthew Cruiser into the deal. I think he will definitely help JWS a lot more than some of the candidates that they're looking at. Obviously, Shane Mumford looks like he might be coming back from retirement, which I think is really interesting, whether or not they get Matthew Cruiser or not, which is like, I haven't heard any news of them getting Matthew Cruiser. It's just a suggestion, but whether or not they get him, I still think they should be getting Shane Munford. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you guys are new to the channel, please make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Comment in the comment section down below what trades you think will happen out of these and what do you think these trades like should be? Do you think Sede Field and Chill for a future first and a future second is, right? Do you think Cruiser should be off his way to GWS? I don't know. Just leave a comment, and yeah, go subscribe to my gaming channel and my IRL channels. Link in the description below if you guys haven't already. So yeah, leave a like, subscribe, comment, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.